Today is gonna to be a little bit different, so strap in. It's gonna be a vlog style video where I just go around and do what I do on a normal day-to-day -day basis, starting off with packing and shipping the 26 inch Race Inc off to the new owner. And then I have a very special build at the last half of this video, so stay tuned. Welcome to this episode of Rad BMX Builds. We're gonna be packing up and shipping a bike off to its new owner and unboxing a brand new bike. It's not brand new as in the year, but brand new still in the box. And it's a very special bike. I've wanted one in my collection for a very long time. And we're not gonna leave it stock. No, 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 we don't do that here. We are gonna customize this bike because I want it to be a brother or twin to another bike I have near and dear in my collection, one of my favorites. That's a clue, that's a hint. One of my absolute never get rid of childhood bikes. First and foremost though, it's gonna be packing this bike up. I use pool noodles. So I got these from Ace Hardware and I go over there and I buy several of them at a time. And I use these to put them over all the exposed frame rails to help protect that bike. So when it is boxed, it doesn't get dinged or banged up, scratched or anything like that. You don't really care about all that, right? I even made a video about it and you guys really didn't watch it. So I guess you don't care about that, but let's just get this bike boxed up and sent off to its new owner because I know they're waiting for it. It's going to Dallas. So, okay, real quick, when I ship a bike, I take off as minimal amount of parts as possible. So handlebars have to come off, of course. Front wheel comes off. The seat will either be dropped down or removed and the pedals come off. That's it. So it should be very simple for them to assemble the bike and ride it. I have to tell you, if you're not an expert, a professional, or highly knowledgeable, take it to a bike shop. Have them put it together for you. Make sure everything works. Make sure everything's tight. Okay, here it is pulled apart. That's about as far as you really need to go to box a bike up. Okay, quick update. You can see what I do with the pool noodles. Try to cover the majority of painted surfaces. And this will just help protect the bike. Now, I will tape these on and then I will bubble wrap the bike. Okay, something I like to do if I remember is to make sure I throw some stickers in there. I usually wrap them up with the pedals and bubble wrap and put them into the box. Okay, here we are with the handlebars, everything wrapped up, pedals with decals wrapped up. And what we do now is we take the front wheel and slide it over the crank on the other side. We drop it into the box. Once in the box, I will take more bubble wrap and fill in the gaps so it won't move side to side. This bike sold yesterday in just moments. So when I do sell a bike and put it on the website, they seem to go really fast. A lot of people take three, four business days to ship a bike off. I just don't see why that's necessary. So I'm usually prepared with a box and with all the packing materials when I decide to sell a bike. So that bike is now shipped, it's gone. Congratulations to the new owner. Now let's get back to the shop. I have been dying to open this box. I have been buying parts for it. I think most of them are here, at least enough of them to do an unboxing and kind of show you what direction I'm heading with this bike. I hope you're as excited as I am about it. I feel like a kid at Christmas, trying to get home, getting through this traffic, <laughs> and uh, we will rip it out of the box as soon as we get there. For you, just a few moments. We're back in the shop, and I wanna reveal the box. So, does that tell you what's in it? Have you figured it out yet? Comment below what you think it is. Is it an SE bike? Is it something in an SE box? I'm gonna be honest with you, it is an SE bike. And it's something I've wanted in my collection. I've been asked about a million times and I just couldn't find the right one. When this one popped up, still in the box, that was the right one for me. So I bought it. I know you're getting really tired of hearing me talk. Sean, just open the box, right? Okay, let's do that. Have you figured it out yet? That is an SE Quad Angle STR1 Stu Thompson replica bike, but I'm not gonna leave it like that. The blue and silver is rad. 
but blue and gold is better. The bike's here. I think I have the majority of the parts I need. Let's get to building. Okay, let's talk about the parts real quick. Everything's silver, right? Silver, black, and blue on this. Or chrome. Or brown. I'm not really digging the colors they chose. Of course, I prefer the blue and gold. So I bought a silver and gold fluted seat post. If you look in the original Stu Thompson quad angle, it had a red line crank and a red line chain ring. So I bought a gold similar style Neptune chain ring, just like the red line. Gold SE stem, gold SE seat clamp, gold pedals. So I'm gonna be swapping out the stem. The wheels, I'm swapping out to gold. I will be keeping the SE crank. I'm not gonna buy red lines for it, but that'll be swapped out. I am gonna keep the black grips, black seat, black tires. It's just a lot cheaper to do that than swap them all out. And I don't want to lose the Stu Thompson grips that come on those bars. So I'm not even going to put it together the way it should be with the parts that it came with. I'm going to immediately start transitioning those silver parts to the gold ones and get this bike put together in a few moments so we can see what it looks like. And then we'll put it next to the PK Ripper. The SE quad angle is all done. I'm real happy with it. I think there are a few things I'm still gonna buy and add to the bike, but for now, it looks really rad. Let's take a look. And you tell me if you like my idea of some of the other parts that I'm gonna continue to change on this build. Okay, pretty good balance of gold. I think right off from the beginning, you notice the brake lever. I'm gonna go ahead and put a gold brake lever on there. Just gotta be real careful getting these grips off. I don't wanna damage those at all. Now let's talk about some of the things I swapped out. Let's go ahead and start at the beginning or things that I even added. I added the SE donuts that I've had. I added the SE stem. I added the gold wheels with the sealed bearing high flange hubs. I added the pedals, the chain ring, the fluted silver and gold seat post, which I think is really rad. Even though it's a new style seat post, it's the old style, old school throwback to the fluted post, which I'm a big fan of. I added the gold brakes. Again, that's why I want a gold lever. And you can see the rear gold wheel on it. So there it is. So Todd Lyons did a really good interview about this bike and it was in conjunction with Stu Thompson on why they did what they did and why they didn't put Redline flight cranks and sprocket on this because at the time Redline swapped ownership and his contacts over there were then gone and he was unable to get that deal in place while they made this bike so essentially it wasn't available so they put se cranks on it and se spider and se sprocket okay i think that's gonna do it i hope you like it it came out really good it's been a bucket list for me to have both these bikes together i couldn't be any happier give me a thumbs up give me a comment let me know what you think the pk ripper and quad angle finally together and in my collection hope you enjoyed the video Hope you have a rad week. I'm going to keep bringing these videos to you, I'm trying to do one every single day for a week and see if I can. So hope you enjoy the content and as always, stay rad.